I had the honor of serving in 1994-1995 with the organizing committee that established the Academy of Fellows. The Academy was envisioned to have two focuses, one on the individual fellows, which we see in the investiture and in the Golden Eagle dinner recognitions, and the second focus on the missions of the society as a whole, which we often see in the form of mentoring. Over the years, I have held numerous positions with the society, but I am most proud to have served with the August Organizing Committee, uh, Generals Bacchus, uh, Brown, Morris, A. Hearn, McCarthy, Noah, Suzanne D. Geronimo, Steve Greenfield, and others. And I am most proud and thankful to be able to continue to see that the vision unfolded for the Academy of Fellows continues to unfold today. I remain forever dedicated to SAME. I've been a member of the Society for 54 years and a fellow for 30 years. I've been uh, post president of three posts and I find that over the years, the giving back, helping others, mentoring, creating new leaders is so important. 37 years ago, I was given the opportunity to be a post leader for the Hampton Roads Post. At first, I was a bit reluctant, not confident that I could handle the job. But heck, I jumped in, took over programs, and a year later, I was post president. And when I stepped down, I found it very satisfying. It was very confidence building, and it really was helping others. That's the important thing, helping others. Then I moved on in my career and I ended up in Washington, D.C. and I was given another opportunity to be the Washington Post President, the largest post of the society. Again, I worked my way up to being Post President and found that this added to my leadership capabilities, more confidence, helping others, giving back. And then after I retired from the Coast Guard, I had the opportunity to become the, the uh, Northern Virginia Post President the second largest post in the society. Again, stair-stepping up, taking over the post presidency was so rewarding. Don't watch things happen, make things happen. Thus far in my 50-year SAME career, I have enjoyed meeting numerous members across the globe and leadership positions at all levels. As a fellow since 1985, my time as chair of the Academy of Fellows 2018 to 2019, implementing the AOF Action Plan, changing the Academy focus to continued service to our SAME posts was very special. As a distinguished fellow, I believe what we have given back to our society, not what we've received, is our true legacy. I'm Linda McKnight, and I was honored to be the first woman chair of the Academy of Fellows 2005 to 2007. Today, I continue my service to SAME as a post member and distinguished fellow. Marking our 100th year, SAME has proven its relevance over time. I hope you will step up and seek opportunities in SAME so that your fingerprints will be on the Society's 200th year celebration. One of my greatest uh... Uh, pleasures was as a national director. I had the privilege of going back to the national meetings every year to uh, represent Portland Post. To have the national meeting move from the East Coast to the West Coast to Portland. And as a, a presentation, I had a mural uh, of showing all of the beauties of Portland and everything like that. And, and I invited them to come and they said the opposition was that it was just too far. And I said, well, you know how far it is from Portland to Washington, D.C.? It's a long ways, I know. But surprisingly, it's the same distance from Washington, D.C. to Portland, I told them. <laughs> Anyhow, I made a good presentation and they voted to come to Portland and it was voted one of the greatest meetings they ever had. <laughs>
2012, I was elected as the first civilian president of SAME under a new governance structure that relied on non-active duty military officers to lead the society. When I was asked if I'd be interested in this position, I was a national vice president. I obviously considered it a tremendous honor. I had served at every level of SAME on numerous committees and councils, including as the chair of the Academy of Fellows and as a director on the national board. I became a fellow in the third class of fellows under the 1995 initiative, which created the current uh, Academy. And this year, I'm celebrating my 50th anniversary of continuous membership and service in SAME. When I became a fellow, I didn't think there could be any greater honor. I joined SAME to be part of something bigger than myself. Becoming a fellow put me in a very select group of members who demonstrated by their leadership and commitment that they belong at the very top of the society's membership. I quickly learned that becoming a fellow doesn't mean your role is done. It became obvious I had a new role, to become a mentor and help others become leaders in the society. Becoming president of the society certainly rivaled my selection to the Academy of Fellows, but becoming president involved a three-year commitment while becoming a fellow is a lifetime position. If you're a fellow, congratulations, but your work is not done. You need to ask yourself what you have done to make the society better, and what have you done to mentor others to rise to leadership positions in the society. If you're not a fellow, I'd encourage you to stay engaged and seek election to the Academy. I became a fellow about 22 years ago, back in 1998. And that has provided me so many opportunities going forward in my career. It, it's really been amazing. Um, I was very, very active in post events, some national activities, and even a couple of fellow investitures that I helped set up. Um, all these different mentors and business associates that I met along the way really provided a huge benefit to me. And believe it or not, I became the first female national president of SAME. And that was a lot of fun. I also got the opportunity to meet a lot of people that I had never met before. So as we go into our next century, my advice to you is if somebody asks you to volunteer, say yes, raise your hand, Stay engaged in the society because we as a society and the Academy of Fellows have so much that we can give back to others. So let's go do it. Join me. Cheers. I'm Scott Prosuch. I've been an SAME member for 40 years and a fellow for 20. In 1999, myself and several very talented SAME members got together and developed a concept for an engineering and construction camp. The first camp was launched in 2000 with the incredible support of the U.S. Air Force Academy. And from there spread to other posts and all the other services. To date, we've achieved a milestone of 3,000 alumni. With over 3,000 alumni, approximately 50% of those have achieved the STEM degree. 20 to 25% serve in our armed forces. They're base engineers, they're aviators, have served multiple tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. They're project managers working for Caterpillar or Microsoft or a PhD doing cybersecurity for the Pentagon. All of this contributes to national security, a fact that CME should be very proud of. I'm Gene Lupia, and one of the former uniformed military service chiefs who served as the president of our society in 1996 and who has been a fellow since 1977, and that's a long time. I watched our society grow and I watched the Academy of Fellows be birthed and grow. And I'm encouraging you today to be inspired, to be a fellow, to make an impact on our society so that it is better in the future than it has been for the first hundred years as we've just celebrated our centennial. My best wishes to you and I implore you to remain inspired, passionate, and make an impact on our society.